with nominal pi method. Here, this is the impedance, resistance and reactance, which is at the center. And here, the capacitance of the capacitance, this line capacitance, it is actually divided into two halves and one half is at the concentrated at the sending end, other half is concentrated at the receiving end. So when it is, the, when this kind of uh, transmission line uh, see that is called nominal pi method. Now we will see that before we get into the derivation let us start with the phase diagram. So coming to phase diagram, here you know that these two are in parallel. The voltage across the capacitance will be equal to the voltage across the inductance, sorry, at load. This voltage is uh, via, same voltage will appear across load as well as across resist, uh, capacitance. We will take current first, we have to start with a reference. I am taking VR as a reference. VR I am taking as a reference, reference voltage. When I have taken the VR, you know where IR comes. Assuming that it is an inductive load, IR will be lagging by some angle with respect to VR. That mentioning is, let it be IR. So angle between IR and the VR is 5R. After knowing this VR, that is, voltage across the capacitance is also VR. Now, this voltage, since are in parallel, this voltage plus the voltage across this impedance is actually the voltage across this capacitance, that is Vs. Since Vs and here, they are parallel, the voltage across this Vs exactly will appear across this capacitance. So, this voltage is equal to voltage across this impedance as well as voltage across the capacitance. Now, voltage across the capacitance is known that is VR. Just now we got that as that it was as a reference. So after knowing VR, let us find VZ. To find VZ, what is VZ is equal to? VZ is equal to voltage across the resistance plus voltage across the inductance. Voltage across the resistance and to find the voltage across the inductance, first I should know what is the current flowing to this. This same current is not flowing through this because it's one current from IS. So whatever the current is 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 coming from this uh, in this line. The current is divided into two parts. One is IC2, other one is you can call it as IZ. IC2 plus IZ is IS. So the current flowing through resistance and inductance is IZ. IZ into R plus IZ into XL is actually Vz. Iz into R plus Iz into Xl is nothing but Vz. So I have to find this. Let us start finding Iz into R. Where Iz into R? Now we know that since we are, we have to find Vz only. I don't know the current flow through resistance also. First I should find where Iz is. I said again if you come here at this node, I said is the incoming current, I C1 and the, it's dividing into two into two currents that is I C1 and I R. Here I said is coming. This I Z is getting divided here. Now what is I said? I Z is nothing but I C1 summation of vectorial addition of IC1 plus IR will give you IZ. So now I have to find IZ first. After that I should find VZ. After that it should be added with VR to get VS. Now let us start now from here. How do you find IC1 and how do you find IR? IR is already written here. Means we know where IR is. But we don't know where IC1 is. So where IC1 is the current flow through this capacitance. This capacitance voltage is VR. Voltage across this. Now, with respect to VR, where IC1 can come? Since it's a pure capacitance, current leads and voltage lags by 19. That's why VR is here. So IC1 comes exactly here. Once I got IC1 and IR, these two should be added vectorially to get IZ. 
So add them by constructing parallelogram. So if I do it like this, by if I construct parallelogram, I will get I Z here. Now after finding I Z, I should find V Z. Right? V Z is where to go? V Z is nothing but I Z into R plus I Z into H Z. So let us try, take this I Z. We want I Z. That's why if you construct parallelogram. VR and IZ, if I write parallel to this, I will get the IZ here. This is IZ. This is IZ, writing parallel to this. I want actually IZ into R. Where IZ into R comes, it will be on same line. IZ into R. Where IZ into XL comes, it will be exactly, it makes 90 degree. IZ into XL. So construct parallelogram. What we get? The voltage, if I this voltage will give me VZ. We got this. That is Vz. Once I got Vz, Vz should be added with the voltage across the capacitance. Since Vr itself is the voltage across the capacitance, Vr plus Vz will give us Vs. Now Vz is here. Vr is here. So by constructing parallelogram, or the result of this, will give me V. You know that the angle between Vs, so Vr and Ir is 5R. This is how Vs we got. After finding Vs, you should actually find, because phase diagram is a pictorial representation of all voltages and currents. So let us start, we don't know here Is, where exactly Is comes. Of course Vs we got. After that, the only one parameter is left as Is. So let us find that also here. Is is equal to IC2 plus IZ. We know IZ is here. We know where IC2 comes. So now, where IC2 is there, that is current flowing through the capacitance. What is the voltage of the capacitance? Vs. So you know where Vs? Yes. So with respect to Vs, can you tell me where IC2 is there? Yes. Because it's a pure capacitance. With respect to Vs, IC2 will be leading. Now, Vs is here. Exactly right. This is IC1. Exactly keeping Vs in mind. Right exactly parallel to this. Is I mean, perpendicular to Vs. You should write. You will get Is. So, IC2. Yes, is no IC2. So, IC2 plus IZ. IC2 plus IZ will give me. If I write perpendicular like this, this is actually IZ. Constructing these two by using these two, construct parallelogram to get IS. It is IS. This cause is IS. Okay? Uh, we have identified IS also in the phase diagram. This is actually the nominal phi method phase diagram. Next, let us do the derivation to find efficiency and regulation.